In this video, you are going to learn how to use the tint actor and the daytime controls in order to make cell shaded objects better match the lighting and mood of your scene. If your scene has very harsh lighting conditions, like in this case, a green sun with a green sky, you'll find that your cell shaded object will stick out like a sore thumb. In order to avoid having to manually customize the color of each cell shaded object for this scene, you can use the tint actor, which you can find under Content, Stylized Rendering System for Mobile, Blueprints. Drag it into your scene, and in the Details panel, you'll find the parameter Tint. Use this to tint all your objects to match the lighting of your scene. In this case, let's set this to this green. Using this tint option works very well if your scene has static lighting conditions. But if your scene features a day-night cycle, this likely won't be enough. For this case, we are going to have to use the daytime controls. In order to be easily able to use your systems in combination with SRS's systems, you're going to need to set up one thing. If you have already followed the setup from the Shadow Manager tutorial or the Quick Start tutorial, you can skip this. In order to set this up, go to the Content folder and navigate to your game mode. In my case, it's on a third-person blueprint, blueprints right here. If you are not using any game mode so far, hit right-click, blueprint, and create a new game mode right here. Now go into your game mode and add the component BP Tint Game Mode Component SRS. Like this. Once you've added this, you're done. All you need to do is make sure that this game mode is actually selected in your world settings. For this scene, I've created a simple sun moon rotation system. It consists of two directional lights, which I've simply dragged into the scene and called sun and moon and an actor that controls the rotation of those. Into this actor I can input the sun, the moon and the daytime in percent. Let's quickly take a look at the blueprints of the system. It mainly consists out of this refresh function right here, which sets the rotation of the sun and the moon so that they are opposite. Additionally, it also refreshes the material of your sky sphere and does something else which we'll get into later. This refresh function is called in the construction script where it also finds the sky sphere that we're using on our level using this and saves it so it can be used. This refresh function is also called by a looping sequence that starts once we begin playing. This sequence updates the daytime, so the daytime loops once every 7 seconds. It roughly looks like this when we're in game. You'll notice that as it turns night, and the moon should actually control where the highlights and the shadows are on our spheres, the sun still controls everything. Now this is bad behavior, and we don't want that. And for that we're going to have to customize some things in the tint actor. Let's get into the tint actor and enable the daytime controls. These daytime controls control everything from the tint of your objects, your shadows, your highlights, the opacity of the same things, and the scale of those things. Additionally, it also switches which one of two directional lights should control where the shadows and the highlights are. Now let's select our sunlight for our sun right here and our moonlight for our moon right here. Now to the important part. This daytime parameter by default isn't updated from anywhere. This is something that you'll need to implement into your system. If we take a look at the example system that isn't uh, included with SRS and only serves for demo purposes in this tutorial, you will find that at the end of the refresh function, the daytime gets set onto our tint actor. This works the following. We get the game mode using the game mode node. This is why we modified the game mode during the setup. Then from the game mode we get our component that we added. This is the tint game mode component SRS. And now with this component we are able to get our tint actor. Now all that we need to do is quickly do a check if this tint actor is valid, because if no tint actor is in your scene this could create errors, so quickly do a check to avoid any errors, and then call the function update daytime on our tint actor that we receive from this set of nodes, and then input the daytime in a 24 hour format. In this demo actor the daytime is in percent, meaning from 0 to 1, so I quickly multiply it by 24 in order to convert it to a 24 hour format that is used by SRS. Now with this setup done, we can go in game and we'll see that once it turns night, there's this switch and now the moon controls where the lights are coming from. 
You'll see, however, that the sun is in control of where the light is coming from for far too long. We can adjust this using the sunrise and sunset time parameters. For this scene, setting the sunrise time to 6 a.m. and the sunset time to 6 p.m. works well. As in this example, a 24 hour cycle takes 7 seconds, I'm refreshing the tint actor on every tick. If you have a slower day-night cycle, for example one that takes an hour, you probably don't want to refresh this every tick, as this will decrease performance. In that case, do not execute this update daytime function, which in my case is called through this refresh function, on every tick, but instead create a timer that executes the update daytime function once every 30 seconds or even every minute. Now let's get to the customization of how our cell shading changes based on daytime. If we go in game, we'll notice that the switch is immediate and there's barely any transition in the switch from the moon to the sun. For this example, I'd like to fade the highlights and rim lights out when we're near the switch, near 6 and 18 o'clock, and fade them back in once the time is a little bit further away from those times. In order to do that, let's customize the highlight rim light opacity. By default, there's this curve that says fade at 3 and 21. But however, we want it to fade if you've come at this 6 far, and 18. You're pretty much so done with the basic necessary setup. Curve, and now it's up to you to customize the this tint fade or the scale of your effects at 6 and however 18. you want. I'm only and going to go over this curve a few instead. examples. In this it curve you'll see that by default the opacity is set to I'm only one going to go over a few examples that most show times. you generally but what you could do. But and because every scene is different and every day the opacity goes down to zero. You're going to have to adjust this, these yourself. The opacity is at zero at 18 o'clock and it starts fading down at 17 at half past five and at Half past six, it should be fully faded in again. Let's do the same thing for the first fade as well. Now let's head back into our tint actor and set the curve strength to one. Now let's quickly check as we get very close to this transition period, our highlights fade away. Now let's do the same thing for our shadows as well. Use the Fade at 6 and 18 curve, but set the strength to something like 0 0.5 so the shadows don't fade out fully. Something you could want is for your highlights to get smaller at night. In order to do that, let's, con let's change the highlight scale based on a curve. Right now it's using a fade and 3 and 21 curve, we don't want that, so let's create a new curve. I'm going to duplicate the fade at 3 and 21 curve and I'm going to call this small highlights at night. And let's open this curve and let's delete some of these keys. And since our night ends at 6 a.m., let's set the first keyframe to 6 a.m. and set the last keyframe to 6 a.m. PM. Now in the time before 6 a.m. and in the time after 6 p.m. I want this curve to go down a bit to make the highlights a bit smaller. So let's add two new keys. Set the time for this one to 24 and for the first one to 0. And let's set the scale to 0 0.6. Now, to make this effect a bit smoother, let's simply hit 1, so the curve automatically smooths out. Make sure to keep this linear, so the highlights don't grow dur during the day. And now, with this curve inputted, let's watch what happens with the highlights as it becomes night. Let's even make this effect a bit stronger by setting it to 0 0.25. 
You could do similar modifications for the scale of the rim lights or the scale of the shadows or the opacity of or the opacity of any of those effects. But one main thing you're probably going to have to do in every scene is control this global tint parameter. By default it uses this daytime tint 1 curve right here and if we open this it'll look like this. This curve controls the tint of all your objects based on daytime. Let's quickly take a look into our scene. You'll see that our objects begin to turn red a little bit sooner than the sky actually does. So let's try to adjust this by moving this keyframe a bit to the right. Let's disable snapping and let's move it here. Let's also move these keyframes a bit to the right so everything just stays a bit more smoother. Now let's look It's still a little bit too early, so let's move this even further to the back. Now that already looks a lot smoother, and that's pretty much it. And with that you pretty much know everything you need to know about customizing your shading based on daytime. As you can see, it's really not that complicated, but it will require some tweaking to get it to look perfect in your scene.